Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Kellerhals, and I'm an intern here with Journey Through Hollowed Ground National Heritage Area. And today I'm glad to be welcoming you to join us as we talk with Jill Sellers, uh, president of uh, Main Street Gettysburg. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So uh, what can you tell us about this heritage area? Well, I'm very excited to uh, to be serving in, the, in this capacity because uh, Main Street Gettysburg is um, a small organization. We're a nonprofit organization, and we get to work with uh, multiple partners at uh, the local, state, and federal levels, uh, all with the guise of uh, being the visionaries for uh, for this sacred place. So. But it's a delicate balance to uh, to figure out how you do historic preservation and ensure economic development for the future. So you know you you want to be able to uh, commemorate the past um, and prepare for the future. And sometimes those things collide, uh, and we have to keep them in a particular uh, in a particular balance so that they continue to work forward um, in a way that people can appreciate. Um, the past, uh, be able to study it for what it is, understand its relevance, and then also understand the place uh, that it is that is a vibrant and um, and functioning economy where people live and work and go to school and, uh, you know, have to interact with, uh, you know, their friends and neighbors, their government. Uh, and and we, uh, we try to envision opportunities to, to make that possible and uh, and make that work for so we can hand it off better than we found it. Well, that's awesome. And uh, with that, without further ado, I'll just hand it over to you. Okay, thanks. Well, I'm going to share my screen. And um, if that's oh, well, host disabled participant share. Okay, so can you enable my sharing, please? There we go. So can I enable my screen? Because I see your screen. Is the option there for you at the bottom to share screen? Um, it, it's, oh, here it is. I found it, just took me a second. Okay, there we go. Now awesome. can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome, let me start that. There, thank you so much for that. Sorry about that. Okay, so I just mentioned that uh, the mission of Main Street Gettysburg is we work with partners. Uh, we work on preservation, revitalization, and improvement of the historic district in particular. So the historic district of uh, Gettysburg is really um, about a mile long, the borough of Gettysburg itself. Uh, not a very big place. So uh, people that, uh, that know their history and know what happened here in 1863 with the culmination of the high watermark of uh, the, of the Confederacy's push north is, uh, this is where the battle happened. Um, presently, there are about 7,500 uh, people that live in the borough of Gettysburg. That includes about 2,600 college students that live here. So um, as a location and as a municipality, this is not a very big place. Um, so historically that was uh, true, numbers were, were smaller then, but uh, we're not that much bigger now. Uh, we're very constrained as far as um, our size because we're surrounded by the National Battlefield Park, uh, which is which is certainly a blessing uh, for for uh, our location and and the reason that uh, we are so highly regarded um, both across the country and around the world as a as a destination for people to come visit and learn. Um, but it also is makes for a great challenge uh, for you know to, to manage our way forward because we don't have the opportunity to grow outside our very uh, restricted boundaries. So that'd be pretty creative with um, with how we manage our manage our historic space. So for Main Street Gettysburg, I'll go over just a couple of things without getting way down in the weeds on things, but. Um, some of the larger projects that we've done in the last, um, the past projects have been in the last about 12 years. Um, the David Wills House, if you uh, 
is on Lincoln Square, which is in the heart of uh, Gettysburg. The David Wills House is where President Lincoln stayed the night before he uh, delivered the Gettysburg Address at the National Cemetery. So uh, that house um, um, ha was restored by Main Street Gettysburg, um, actually back in 2008. So I think it's a little bit more than 12 years now. Um, and uh, that was, uh, so here's uh, a couple of pictures of what you would see uh, now uh, coming here. So you're, uh, we also work in conjunction with the National Park Service that owns the David Wills House. Um, and we work, um, to basically staff it so that people can, uh, so that you can visit that that uh, location. Uh, the, the bedroom where he stayed is upstairs. It's a fascinating small museum, and like I said, it's in the heart of it's it's in the heart of our downtown, and it's a, a phenomenal renovation. So, uh, what did I say? Twelve must be fourteen years ago. Seven point two million dollars was. Um, so I would wager that would probably be a maybe almost a ten million dollar renovation nowadays. So um, Steinware Avenue, um, this is um, going south um, and this will lead you to where the third day of the battle was uh, with Pickett's Charge. So this is another uh, area that um, is, is highly traveled, uh, highly visited by, um, by people coming here to study, uh, study the history that we have here, but also has lots of other amenities for when you're coming here. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, uh, local breweries um, and uh, places and things for the kids to do along that road. But uh, one of the things that it was really lacking several years ago was a, a need for um, a street scape, uh, a, this kind of facelift. And so what we were able to do through, again, through partnerships, grant uh, application efforts, is we put in uh, what I think turned out to be seven and a half million dollar grant. And then we and then locally, we raised half a million dollars as grant match money. Now, again, talking about um, a population of just over 7,000 people, uh, raising half a million dollars is, you know, is, uh, you know, is a pretty good sum of money. But what that enabled us to do was apply for those uh, grant opportunities to have the local match monies in hand. And what you see in the lower right hand corner is a picture of the 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 end state of that project so it took up all the old sidewalks and sidewalks that were there from probably the 1960s and some of them that didn't even exist uh broken sidewalks um and then added what you see the heritage lighting so this is all an area that's walkable uh even in the evening it's you know it's ada compliant so you have um the appropriate uh you know curbing and access so it really is a very uh, family friendly and walkable destination. That's one of the one of the key points in what Main Street Gettysburg is is uh, forecasting for the future. Is that people are looking for places that they can, you know, visit. Uh, uh, usually, park their car and how can they find where they're going to stay, where they're going to eat, things that they're going to do, all within walking distance. And uh, downtown Gettysburg is very much very much. Uh, is currently in that fashion, but we're looking to even expand that that uh, notoriety for that type of ambiance. So our next uh, project that we have on on deck right now that is not done, uh, we are currently seeking um, federal infrastructure grant uh, opportunities, um, and we're in the second round of those applications. So. We have been funded through what is called design and engineering, which means as you look at the pictures, um, the before, which is actually now, um, and the proposed after is how it would change um, the uh, the access to downtown. So it would be similar to what where we started on Steinware. So looking back at Steinware is our first 10 year stretch. This Baltimore Street project would be kind of our next, we're hoping less than 10 years. Um, and uh, because none of these projects happen quickly. Um, it's all tied to uh, grant monies, uh, uh, award cycles, and certainly the administrations that manage these, these funds. Um, and then um, not every municipality gets a grant of this size every year. So even though we forecast these things, they have to be forecast realistically. And it's usually uh, in you know five to ten year um, you know um, stretches. So my guesstimation is by the time we finish Steinware, 
which is done. Now turning to Baltimore Street, which is next. Um, and hopefully we can break ground on this um, in the next couple of years and it would be done prior to, I hope 2025 is my, is my forecast. Um, and then on from there, we would go to the next section of, of our historic downtown, which was Route 30. And so by the time you look back on all that, this is really a 30 year infrastructure project. Um, so it's, it's nothing that uh, happens instantaneously. It takes a lot of people and partners. Um, and especially as you look at this list, um, so this is a $13 million project, but it includes everything from underground to above ground. So everything from stormwater management. Um, Gettysburg is, you know, was certainly here before 1863. This was a vibrant and uh, dynamic economy. One of the reasons that the battle happened here is because uh, there are about 10 roads from every direction that lead to Gettysburg. And that's how they all, that's how all the, all the, uh, you know, forces from both sides ended up here because uh, this is a, a major, uh, this was a major trade juncture at the, um, during uh, the Civil War. And so this is how, how they all kind of ran into each other. And that continues to be uh, true today. And that's one of the reasons that this Baltimore Street project is so critical is because we are, a, um, we're not a transportation hub, but we are, uh, we, all of that passes through here. Uh, lots of trucking and uh, movement of goods and services definitely comes through here. So we need to make that uh, safer for um, everything from the school kids that walk down the street to get to the schools that are right off of this, these major thoroughfares. Um, and then going underground, the things like stormwater, because this place is old, we have we have clay pipes underground that are that are continually breaking, and then we find them. And I say we, I mean the borough of Gettysburg and their public works department. Um, you know, and constantly trying to um, bring forward um, this 250-year-old um, footprint that's underneath there. And how do you how do you manage that? How do you make sure that you're um, that you're addressing that from an environmental standpoint? How do you make it? Uh, as sustainable as possible. How do you keep uh, how do you keep that water going somewhere that you want it to go instead of in the in the uh, you know 300 year old basements of some of these witness buildings that are along Baltimore Street? So trying to really um, upgrade how we're moving forward and again taking care of this historic landscape uh, because these you know these historic buildings the building that you see in both these pictures it was here during the battle. And uh, so it, it witnessed uh, it witnessed the battle. It witnessed uh, Abraham Lincoln walking down this street to give his infamous Gettysburg Address. Uh, so these are treasures in and of themselves. So uh, doing what we can to help maintain, uh, you know, their notoriety and their uh, sustainability is very important. So uh, again, this goes uh, this whole project. Thirteen million dollars is going to play into the fact that we want people to be able to park their car in the parking garage, you know, walk downtown, take in the local wineries, the local eateries, uh, take in the local museums so that they can learn something. There's things here to do for the kids. Um, you know, the, there's uh, wayfinding signs along the way so that, uh, that you can uh, learn about what happened here, the famous people that were here both before, during the, the battle and the civil war and, and afterwards. So, cause we certainly have, um, you know, have a, uh, a, a, co a continuing history here that this is, uh, is a special place. So uh, that is the next project. So design and elements of the funding uh, for the Baltimore Street project, like I mentioned, um, the, uh, the David Wills house where President Lincoln stayed, uh, the train station where he arrived here at Gettysburg, the train station is still here. Uh, it is operated by the Gettysburg Foundation, and they have are relaunching that this spring, and it's going to be a virtual reality experience. So if you uh, have any interest in uh, taking a look at uh, how that works, come visit Gettysburg and, and check that out because there's going to be, um, you know, a, a new opportunity to see uh, to see downtown, see the people of a, a different era in that with that technology and they're really excited to share that. It's one of the ways that we're trying to collectively 
reach out to uh, new demographics and also younger demographics um, so that we get more of um, more of uh, the younger people coming so that we can pass the torch at some point that there will be a new set of visitors to come here and learn, but there's children's attractions for families uh, and there's, uh, there's the ghost tours are incredibly famous and fun to do. We have a couple of escape rooms downtown that are, you know, you know, super challenging and a good time. Um, but going back to, uh, so Lincoln's, um, <clears throat> Lincoln's walk, excuse me, uh, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, adding, uh, information about the Gettysburg Address on that walk to encourage people to take in the town, and uh, the, uh, the 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 big uh, heavy lift right now for me and my partners is the raise grant, which is uh, due in the middle of April. So we're putting that together, and that'll probably be about a 200-page application that will delineate all the details of everything from stormwater management to heritage lighting to um, ADA compliance to um, um, to public transportation to um, uh, pedestrian and bicycle paths and everything in between. And so uh, that will hopefully be awarded by the end of 2022. So, <laughs> excuse me, sorry about that. Um, another uh, sub project of, of the Baltimore Street uh, project is the Gettysburg Welcome Center. So right now um, we were um, blessed with um, a very generous donor who donated um, a piece of property on Baltimore Street for the specific purpose of developing a welcome center. Um, it'll be right in the middle of town, right between Lincoln Square and Steinware Avenue. A great opportunity again, uh, so that you have um, you know, a chance with a young family if you're walking to stop, check on directions, um, you know, use the restroom, um, you know, get a bottle of water and keep going so that you can continue uh, your stay downtown. So this is a, this is a multi-organization uh, effort at this point. Um, and I hope uh, that we can uh, do the construction of this over the next three years so that it can coincide with the Baltimore Street uh, infrastructure project. So uh, we're all about long range planning here. That's what we do. Like I mentioned, um, from Steinware to Baltimore Street and then heading up to York, York Street off the square and Chambersburg Street off the square, that's Route 30. Uh, that would be the next, uh, the next piece. And um, looking uh, long-term, this is it probably, uh, I will probably hand this off and somebody else will do Route 30 at the rate these go. They don't go quickly, um, but again, it's uh, it's all about finding the opportunities through partnerships um, to have the privilege to envision and enable the future. Uh, and that envisions how we, uh, how we hand this off to the next generations of both residents um, and business owners and community leaders. So that includes our local municipalities and our, our county government and everyone in between. Uh, we have uh, over 90 nonprofit organizations in Adams County, all doing extraordinary things uh, for the community. And, and I get to, uh, and many others, but I get to reach out to many of those and work in conjunction so that we can deliver this place uh, you know, to what's next. So that's what I have. I don't need to share my screen any for any more. There we go. So I'll be happy to ask any questions that uh, that I can field at this time. Well, thank you for a great presentation. That's um really interesting. Um, let's see here. Let's look for some questions. Okay. Um, first off, what what generally is the hardest thing about your job about maintaining and uh, proliferating all of this historic area? Um, hardest part is probably patience. Like I mentioned, everything is a long-term commitment uh, of some kind or another. Um, the difference between Gettysburg and a place like Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia, Colonial Williamsburg is a closed environment. It's, it's, you know, it's a gated area where, you know, you, they open it up at a certain time and then the shops are there and, and 
events and, and um, exhibits are there for, e for you to see as a, as a visitor. Um, and then when it's time for all those shopkeepers in that environment to go home, you know, they all go home and then you lock the gate on the outside. Well, whereas Gettysburg is a living, breathing economy, people live here. We have people that, uh, that own businesses on Baltimore Street and other streets that their business is in the ground floor and their apartment is upstairs, just like it was 200 years ago. Um, so this is very much kind of a, a symbiotic, um, you know, um, you know, sort of push pull at all times. And so the, the real challenge is, is that nothing happens instantaneously. And uh, when you feel like it's a huge victory, which is a, a couple of things, um, design and engineering uh, monies um, have been granted by the federal government, as well as the state, as well as local fundraising efforts. But that has taken 2017, almost five years. So, you know, so that's very exciting, but, you know, it took five years to be excited and then we're still not, and, it's, and we still haven't stuck a shovel in the ground. That, so it's, it's, a, it's a process of patience, I think is the hardest part of my job. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, a lot of patience needed. Um, let's see. Well, we have, some, we have some thoughts here or questions concerning like, does it seem that the historic downtown area is almost in uh, competition for tourists with the battlefield or are people surprised that there's a lot more to Gettysburg than uh, the battlefield? <laughs> True on on both counts. Um, so uh, we're not we're not in competition with with the National Park Service. In fact, um, I work regularly with the superintendent of the National Park. Um, he's actually on my board of directors, and uh, so there's very much that is one of those partnerships that that we treasure because it really helps that uh, if we're we understand what the approach is from both spaces um, that people are visiting the park. Then you know what what can we also um, let them know about that's happening either in town in terms of an event, uh, whether that be a lecture series if they're here to learn history, or if it's just uh, maybe a fun event like you know in the fall the Halloween parade or the dinner long dinner that's outside, um, other opportunities in the park and stuff like that if they're here with their families. Um, really, the goal between the partners at this point is to create a seamless destination because people that come to the park we want them to come into town. Uh, we want them to understand that, uh, you know, a lot of people will come to town and say, well, where's the battlefield? It's like, well, the whole thing was a battlefield. I mean, everywhere you looked, something was going on at that time. It was not not good. But so, again, we're surrounded by the Park Service uh, battlefield, but they are most definitely a, a partner for us. Um, and as far as um, what we can uh, offer them in, uh, by enticing them into town, and, and that's all the things that you're not going to get out on the battlefield because you're not going to get a place to stay or a place to eat. Um, you know, it's a place of reverence and study. Um, it, it is a phenomenal layout of information as far as being able to interpret, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the leadership decisions that were made, um, good and bad, uh, over that three-day period and what led us to hope, you know, to, uh, to turning the tide of the Civil War. Um, so it's really a fascinating opportunity, but we want people in town so that they can uh, see what the rest of the picture is and, and how we can, uh, it's really, if you've got a, a day or if you've got a week to spend, or if you wanna come spend the summer, this is a cool place to come. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see, I think on a related note, we have a question concerning um, the buy-in from the people that are a part of that symbiotic relationship, because I, I guess, uh, a lot of times urban planning things and, and changes like this face some resistance from the people living there. Is that the case in Gettysburg or do people know where they're at? <laughs> uh, it, it's an ever evolving relationship as we do these things. Um, so one of the challenges that, that all of, uh, that I have and that my partners have uh, is, is keeping people informed and, and, getting, and getting community meetings available. Um, I mentioned the Baltimore Street Project going back to 2017-18, held a series of community meetings so that people could ask questions, give their input, explain why they either supported or didn't support, give their ideas. Uh, we've had community meetings about the Gettysburg Welcome Center to say, you know, what does this need to be? What does it not need to be? Um, and, and so that we can, that doesn't mean that it goes flawlessly, 
uh, without a doubt. You know, there are some there are some that uh, the Baltimore Street, um, you know, had I've had business owners very concerned. They they love the idea of having new lighting, new sidewalks, ADA compliance, and whatnot. But they've also said, "Oh my gosh, the construction is going to take how long, and how much is that going to hurt my business while you have the the road torn up?" And that's a really valid concern because uh, you know construction is uh, feels like it can go on forever sometimes, especially a, a project of this magnitude. Uh, but you know if we don't do it, what kind of shape are the roads going to be in another 10 to 15 years? And then we're desperate to do it, uh, and then it comes with a different price tag. So yeah, so no, we don't make everybody happy. I'm not. I can't begin to to uh, to fool you on that. But we do try to make, uh, I try to make myself as available as possible for questions. And so at least people can come away with an understanding of what is happening. And they know that they have a resource uh, when they have a concern or, or a question that they have somewhere to go that they're not left out in the cold. Yeah, well, thank you. That, that makes a lot of sense. And that's, uh, I'm sure, another ongoing thing forever. Um, well, let's see. I think uh, we'll get here to our sort of uh, final question, which we always like to ask our great guides through these um, national heritage areas. Um, basically, how did you get to where you are? And if, in this case, do you have any advice for people around the country who want to preserve their own historical areas, towns, and get into this kind of work? Well, there's a, like I said, there is a, a ton of opportunities, um, certainly in the places that, uh, that even for people to just get involved, um, if they're not looking for a career necessarily, I mean, there's certainly career opportunities, but um, I encourage people to get involved on a volunteer basis because uh, across every nonprofit that I know, and certainly um, uh, historic preservation nonprofits are always looking for people that are interested, uh, that have a little bit of time to spend. Um, and, and I think that's another misnomer about, about volunteering is it doesn't take as much time as you think it does. Um, you know, a few hours here, you know, every week or every other week, um, you know, or an hour, I've got a couple of programs here that, that I run that uh, I couldn't do without the volunteers that come out for about an hour and a half every Monday. Um, and they are priceless. They are absolutely priceless. And part of what they take away from that is an understanding of where we are with all the, the projects that are that are in the hopper. Uh, and they feel very informed and, and they are excellent at that word of mouth, uh, you know, keeping a positive spin on things um, and making sure that when people ask them questions that they can come to the table with, uh, with an accurate answer that's gonna help feed a, a, you know, a positive narrative. Great, great. Um, so much community happening with, with everyone there and it's great to hear about. Well, um, yeah, we wanna thank everyone who tuned in. And firstly, we'd like to thank you, Ms. Sellers for joining us today and giving us that great presentation. Thank you for having me, I enjoyed it. And uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, make sure to join us next week at the same time, 12 p.m. Eastern as we uh, visit with Harper's Ferry. Thank you, everyone.